Queen. Let's try this again. Now we are live. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Dolph Talk West Virginia. I am your host, Shane Rains. If this is your first time, you know how I always start. If it's your first time, here on Dolph Talk, we cover everything bass fishing, tournament fishing, news, uh, angler profiles, Youth, conservation, you name it, we'll cover everything here. Uh, exciting year 2021. I hope you all are uh, staying safe, and I hope you're ready for uh, for the new season. 2021 is just around the corner, and we're going to take this opportunity tonight during this live show. I hope you saw the image that's been kind of, I know, floating around, uh, but we've got some guests on tonight. And before we lead into the guests and who's here uh, and, and we do have three guests coming on tonight, uh, but let me just give you just a little background on last year. I know we talked about a little bit last episode, uh, man, last year, obviously COVID hit, we're still dealing with it now. Uh, the exciting thing is it gives you time to really ground, uh, hang out with some family and it gave me some time to kind of reassess, reevaluate. I know, and, and and all of you can be honest, uh, that just just me coming on here, reading through a bunch of tournament results, uh, when when those tournament results, we want to hear them, it's great, but uh, that definitely gets, gets old after a while, and it's just kind of the same old, same old. Interviews are always fun. We have some wonderful people on last year, organizations, trails, uh, anglers, uh, our local anglers that went out and absolutely just threw down and were able to uh, really showcase the skills that we have right here in the state with our anglers. So, man, it really made me to st step back, like I said, last few months leading into these last few shows, just kind of just thought and reevaluated uh, and, and want to make this exciting and keep it fun and keep it interesting for, for all of you. So what better way than to uh, – uh, you just kind of thinking about branch out a little bit. Uh, let's make it interactive. Let's make it fun. This is about all of us, and, and I hope we all can uh, join in and have a good time with it. But a couple quick shout-outs. Greg, Tony, Heath Mullins, what's up, buddy? Uh, man, thanks for tuning in. Lewis Vass, Summersville. Where are you fishing at, Lewis? Thanks for tuning in, man. I, I, I haven't seen any pictures. Uh, give us an update. I heard Summersville is starting to freeze over or at least has some ice up on the uh, surface of the water right now. Uh, give us an update. Larry Parsons, I know you're ready for tournament season, buddy. Uh, Ken Hackworth, what's up, buddy? Thanks for tuning in. You're president of Bass Nation of West Virginia. So, All right, so without further ado, I'm, I don't, I don't want to drag us out uh, too much longer. I just wanted, really wanted to... I took a step back, wanted to reassess, try, try to make it fun and exciting to keep these conversations going. And I think no better way than to include more people in conversations, get some other folks' sides uh, on things, their opinions on different topics, tournaments, results, you name it. We're going to cover it all, and it is now going to be bringing in a, a team. So, yeah, man, Marvin. Marvin Jeffrey, shout out to Adam McGee, making adult state team, 17 years old. Yeah, uh, Summersville Lake this last fall, extremely tough fishing. And Adam, he definitely threw down. And I know a couple guys, we won't throw out any names, but would we'll probably uh, definitely have some stories during, for those couple days with, with him. So, my dude, Justin Hoffman, good buddy of mine, lifelong buddy. Man, thanks for tuning in, man. Awesome. Uh, all right, so without further ado, I don't want to drag this on any longer. Uh, like I said, we, I just want to bring on some other people. We're going to talk fishing. And, and, and basically what, what, what I did, <laughs> and I know I feel like I'm running around in circles a little bit. I just want to make sure I get this message and kind of how I'm feeling with it all out. And it is, one, I can't do every bit of it. Uh, it's so hard to keep up on all the, the uh, research and uh, find, uh, keeping up all the tournament results and info and upcoming. I have a ton of people that help me with that already. Uh, I can name many, many, many uh, that, that reach out to me, give me, give me a text. Uh, just try to help me, help me keep, keep updated. But I have reached out to some anglers, local anglers, West Virginians uh, at all levels. We're talking covering kayaks, boats. Uh, long-time bass boat fisherman. Uh, we've got every angle covered. We're going to try to bring you all the information from all sides 
So that way this will truly be your one stop of everything bass fishing. So very excited. Uh, very excited. Uh, Mud River is still looking good as an, as an update. Uh, I would say definitely in the shallows, there's got to be some, some ice out there, I would say. All right. So without further ado, we don't want to, don't want to drag this on. Let's, let's bring on some people. Let's talk some fishing. Let's talk 2021 tournaments. What are you excited for at home? All of you, I know you're tuning in. You're excited for that first tournament of the year coming up. What is it for you? Drop us a comment. We're going to be reading through it. Fishers of Men is on board. Dustin Dennis, what's up, brother? Uh, uh, everybody for tuning in. Thank you so much. So, all right. Let's see. So, here we go. You saw this image earlier, and it was a course of a couple of... Uh, just silhouettes of people. Like I said, we're going to bring in our first guest. Our first guest, um, local angler, pretty young guy. Actually, I don't even know if he's, 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 is he legal age yet? I'm not real sure. I'm not real sure. Uh, but it has really turned into a buddy of mine for sure over the last few years. And he has been on this show. Can you guess? Can you guess who is coming on that will be uh, joining the team to, to talk fishing? A little bit of this, a little bit of that. Uh, first person up, my good buddy, going to bring him in. Let's see here. Mr. Chase Sansom, what's up, dude? How are you, brother? What's going on, man? I'm doing pretty good. <laughs> Excited right. to be here. I know you are. I know. I mean, you've got to talk a little bit. Amped up, uh, Mr. Chase Sansom. Give everybody a rundown of who you are, where you're from, and what you are fishing. Mr. West Virginian himself. Give us a little update, buddy. Give us a rundown. Who are you? Yeah, I'm Chase. I'm from the uh, – actually, most people know me from the Marshall University fishing team. Other people know me from other things. But uh, I got a lot on the plate this year. We got a lot, we got a lot going on. We have uh, – obviously, I'm going to fish the college bass tournaments uh, this year again. I try to fish all four of them. Then we've got all the Trail of Dreams, the uh, the Pro Am tournaments, and then we're gonna have the uh, the Marshall Fishing tournaments. I'll be at them, but I don't think I'll fish them. But I'll be I'll be beep bopping around somewhere. Yeah, man. Yeah, for sure, dude. I know you're pumped up. Uh, just getting back from a little fishing trip, uh, impromptu. We'll get to that just a little bit later. Uh, but man, we're pumped up, dude. Uh, I'm pumped up to have you. I know we've got to talk uh, a lot of fishing over the last couple years, uh, but love what you do. Love your passion for the sport, and of course, uh, man, uh, give me a little update on, uh, of course, you're covering some pro news and covering some college stuff, keeping everybody updated on that, man, so we appreciate you being here. Brother, we're going to have a yes. good time, man. I know you're pumped. Yeah, man. All right, so let's bring in... Mr. Number Two. Who could Mr. Number Two be... Uh, let's see. Let's see. Man, I'm just glad I got to be number one. How about that? Well, man, you just happened to luck <laughs> out and fall where uh, where the images fell. So, uh, rumor is fish Chase is fishing the pro am. That's a little talk here on the side, uh, for sure. For sure. I'm seeing a bunch of bunch of comments. We'll get to them here in a little bit. But thanks for all uh, everybody for for kind of tuning in for sure. All right. And next up, next up. You see it right below me, that next block. We got to fill it. Who's coming on board? Who's going to give us a little update? I've known this guy for a long time. He has obviously been on the show again multiple times. Another person that's been on the show. Uh, you all already know him. Uh, he don't have any kind of AKA or any kind of nickname or anything like that. So, so we're just going to bring him in. Mr. Bradley West, what's up, dude? Thanks for joining us tonight. Oh, hold on, brother. I'm sorry. I had you muted, man. We got you back now. This is live. Did I mention that? We are live. Right, right. Man, give us uh, the ones that don't know you already, Brad. You've been on here several times. Relay all that Ohio River. Don't talk for me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, give a, Get everybody a little update who you are. Yeah, my name's Brad. I'm up here on the High River, uh, on the higher side of the High River, across from Parkersburg. And uh, 
uh, you know, I've been, you know, good, became good friends with Shane the last few years and uh, do a lot of talking, uh, show a lot of the same interests and, you know, just want to get the, I don't know, word out and the updates about the fishing around the area and, uh, and you know, just make it grow. Yeah, man. Yeah, I think uh, we all can relate to that. We've had many topics, you and I, right here on Dog Talk, Ohio River uh, Conservation Talk, big big episode, and I know there's been a, a lot of people uh, kind of in the shadows been working on some things and talking about some stuff. Uh, so we'll, I, I think as details arise with different things and issues, we're, we're going we're gonna to be hearing from people. And Brad, I appreciate you, man. I know we're excited. Yeah. You and I've been doing this. Uh, you've been relaying information to me for a couple of years. It's been two years now, so it's insane that it's been this long. But man, I'm glad right. to have you, dude, for sure. And uh, man, I can't think of uh, any better person to add to the team. Man, we really appreciate it, dude. Uh, thank you, Shane. I'm, yeah, I'm just looking forward to the opportunity this year. Yeah, man, we're gonna have a good time. So, last and not least, I think there was a uh, somebody threw a comment up just a little bit ago. Uh, B West River Rat. You hear Bobby <laughs> Weicker throwing it out there. <laughs> the River Rat. Well, I think when yeah. you live on the Ohio River, everybody's a river rat, are they not, Brad? That is a very true statement. <laughs> well, I can't see too much either myself. You know, we're uh you know, Canal River, living two minutes from the ramp. Yeah, definitely find myself uh kind of laying on the river quite a bit. But it's been a while. It's been quite a while. All right, last but not least, bring in another buddy. Man, I would have never met this guy if it wasn't for fishing. Uh, more than likely not. And the crew, their whole little crew from the area that they uh, uh, kind of from, a lot of them knew each other beforehand. Phenomenal anglers. Love them all, man. They're great dudes. And we have a lot of fun in little plastic boats. Little plastic boats. <laughs> and uh, this guy is no slouch when it comes <laughs> to fishing out of one either uh without further ado my buddy our final slot in the team uh to kind of just just bring you every bit of news we possibly can and tournament talk is our buddy chris schaefer what's up dude how are you man what's up shane you hear me okay i can hear you okay buddy we got you i, I didn't mute your mic this time i screwed up brad but we didn't mess you up man <laughs> well <clears throat> What's up, guys? Looking forward to uh, doing the show with uh, Chase and Brad, getting to know those guys. And Shane, we go back a long time, so I think you got a good format here and looking forward to seeing what comes from this. Yeah, man. Uh, and this is uh, just a, a quick shout-out to all of you. We're, we're all fishermen, anglers, conservationists. We all are really on the same page when it comes to, to a lot of those things. Not that most anglers aren't, but everybody's kind of got their their views on certain things. So it is awesome to have a team of guys come on, friends, and this is friends. You know, we're talking fish, and we want it to be laid back. We want to be able to bring you the conversation at home. So if you have a comment, if you have an issue, you got a tournament, reach out, comment on the on on a on a post on this live, share this live. We just want this info to be able to get out to everybody so we can uh, er all be on the same page. You know, there's nothing worse than everybody kind of being on five different pages and five different uh, five different information getting passed around. So uh, I know we're all pumped up. So, man, give me a rundown, guys. And for the ones at home, who has been fishing this winter? Uh, what's the deal, dude? Well, I mean, I guess I'll start first. <laughs> well, yeah, we saw pictures. We saw pictures. You snuck out. So yeah. Give us a rundown. So, so I did at, a little. Man? Yeah. So I did a little. Uh, I guess a little winter fishing over at Del Hall. I actually snuck out for just for the day, and I went with a buddy of mine. We uh we drove down to Del Hollow. We caught four. We only caught four fish. It was a little. It was a little rough. It was a little rough. But uh, the four fish we had, I think we were right in that fourteen pound range. So we had a good time. Caught a couple on the uh, old swim bait. Caught a couple on the A rig. A couple on the blade. So can't complain nice. about that. Well, man, what kind of water temps you seeing? 46 down there. She Whoa. was cold. Yes, sir. 46, 46. Brad, you getting out of when is water temps 46 playing around or what, man? <laughs> uh, you know, I got kind of fever pretty bad, so I might try it. That's pretty dang cold. <laughs> 
I think we all can relate to that, man. There ain't no doubt about it. Uh, 46 degrees. I think I saw a post just the other day. Uh, of course, outflow temps at Summersville are, are super vague. We know where that's coming from uh, pretty deep in the lake. But, uh, you know, service temps, I was hearing in the 40s there, too. Uh, actually, I think the outflow temps here was talking like 30-some. So, it's cold. There's ice on the water. Uh, but but it's winter time. I think we're all itching, 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 itching. But I do got to throw uh, throw this out there. I wish I would have pulled up a picture, and I don't have one handy. Watch uh, to you later. But Chris, uh, winter smallmouth fishing. I think we all would love to be able to go more and do that. We we know they they lay in those winter holes, and if you can find those winter holes. And that may, man, it makes me think. I tell you, Blaze, Blaze Hutchins, I haven't got to see Blaze for a long time. I know he stays super busy, wonderful family man, and he just doesn't get to spend as much time on the water as he used to. But that guy could absolutely could find some fish in the winter time in those winter holes. Chris, man, give me a little rundown, dude. What's the deal with the giant smallmouth on the new? I know a lot of people have seen the pictures. This one probably gonna get. Throwing around, circulated around for a couple years. We can joke about that. But, man, what's the deal with wintertime smallie fishing on the river? Man, it's just uh, knowing, picking your picking your time that you go, really. I mean, um, I try to be patient and go when it's an optimal time to hook up on a big fish. And so pay really close attention to water levels, what the uh, – uh, air temperatures going to be like for the next coming days. And, uh, so, um, it, it just, you get a nice day outside. Doesn't necessarily mean that's going to be the best day to yeah. go out and catch a big fish. And so over the last, I don't know, five or six years, I've been trying to piece together some of the, some of the, you know, clues that the nature's given me when I've been out there. And cause I, I probably fish as much between, December and February as I do throughout the summer, to be honest with you. And, yeah. uh, so I've just picked up the clues over the last few years and just tried to now, now I really know what I'm looking for when, you know, conditions line up right. And when I see that come and I, if I can get out, I, I go out. So, yeah, dude. And I think uh, it's funny because, you know, if you just sit back and pay attention and let's be honest out of the handful well, let's rewind a little bit. If you post a giant big fish picture, right? If you're going to if you're going to take the time to throw that out on social media, we bragging about it. We want people to see it, obviously. Uh, but when you you can start patterning that. You know, I remember uh, a few local anglers that are hammers up on the New River Bluestone area, you know, you can watch how these the these bites transition with with special weather. You you said it earlier and man, if you can watch it, if you get a pile of bad weather and you get that weather to stabilize, dude, you take your butt to the river, whether that water temps 38 or 48, 58, it doesn't matter because it seems like that is, uh, you better go because that's the trend. You see it. Yeah, I mean, you see it spot on with, with a lot of these posts and fish caught. Well, I mean, do you agree with that? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it was, um, water temperature was 41 when we were out last time and we caught several really, really nice fish. So, um, you know, those fish feed all year long. So if you, if you just time it right and conditions are good, they're going to bite. So you've got to get your bait in front of them. Really? That's it, dude. I mean, it's about a patience deal. I laughed there not too long ago, Brad, we've talked about it. Chase, uh, I know we've all, Chris, we've all dealt with the same kind of deal, man. I got a bad habit of fishing fast. I love to fish fast. And when it gets into these, obviously winter time, that's, that's non-existent of fishing fast. But I struggle to slow down. I was thinking about this the other day. Of man, you know, you can see success when you really just slow down and pick up, pick an area apart. And winter time is all about that. There's, there's no denying that those fish are. We all know they're lethargic as uh, all get out. But cool, Brad. I know you're itching like me to get out there, dude. Uh, just the same as everybody else. Jason Glisby commented that Summersville is thirty-seven-seven today, so it's not too far off of what what the. Uh, they're shown on the Army Corps uh, Facebook posts every day. So, pretty crazy. Uh, it's cold. It's cold. Well, dude, I'm a power fisherman to the core. And throwing that little blade bait and dropping that little drop shot down with the uh, on, on the live scope about killed me all day yesterday. Could not stand that. Well, 
Yes. That's a, I, I'm glad you brought that up because this is a topic that I was kind of has been on my mind a lot. Uh, and it is hard, Larry. It's extremely hard to slow down. But, uh, and I think, Chris, you might even know where I'm going with this. But, dude, I want an update on your all's opinions, live scope, live. Uh, it doesn't matter. Everybody's live. We're live right now. Everybody wants to be live. Uh, we want to see things happening right now. And in, in this society, you better get used to it because that's that's the, the area. That, that's the way we're going. Everything, want, we want to see it now happen now, whether you're here or China, it doesn't matter. You want to see it. It's insane. So, live scope. Uh, Lawrence live units. Give me some thoughts. I mean, I've got to fish with one. Chase, you've got to fish with one. Chris, Brad, I don't know if you all been in a boat with somebody with one. We've all seen the videos. Is it a game changer? Do you need to have it to be able to compete? Uh, I would not say necessarily you have to have have it to compete. I think it's more of a tool. Um, that being said, though, I think if you get into a situation where you have fish that are super deep or you have schooling fish that you know kind of won't cooperate, I, th I think it's important to have it. I think I think if you don't have it when it's those certain times of year, I think you you you're at a big disadvantage. That's for sure. Yeah, man. I, that was the first place my mind went with some of that. And I'll let, let Brad and uh, Chris chime in whenever. But was when the bite's tough, I, I think back of the state tournament on Summersville, you know, the bite was extremely tough. There were people that always find uh, a pot of fish somewhere, especially late in the fall. And then they can get them to bite. You <laughs> Anytime you got... 100 fish down there or 30 fish or 10 fish down there compared to one, obviously your chances are much better. Uh, but I think then, right then and there was a time when it was like, okay, you you need to be able to pick, it, pick those fish out. You need to be able to see them. And when it's really slow, being able to sit right over top and watch how those fish react instead of just jigging around a, a drop shot uh, randomly, when you know there's fish around, it, it, dude, I think it's a huge, huge asset to have in your boat for sure well yeah Shane, not only that with this technology and of course i'm a river rat where it's not so much important on the higher river like it is some of these lakes and reservoirs you go to but once you kind of figure out the pattern or where fish are holding you, you really don't even have to fish for them you can just roll in there scan some areas and, and roll right out there not even a, you know hook any fish or anything like that and, um i think yeah. it's, it's you're going to have to get on board, but I also think with this technology, you'll see some of the old stuff come back into play after everybody gets out there and keeps beeping on it for years out there. I think some of this offshore stuff will get wore out, and some of your back, uh, you know, your bank game fishing structure on your banks again will come back into play eventually. Yeah, I, I find that I think it's just a trend. You, know, it's like it's like any new bait. And it's it goes lo right along with studies that we've all read. And if you haven't, you need it. You need to do some get in get in there and do some research on bass behavior. Uh, and, and there's no set like uh, that's one bad thing with bass fishing. There's not a whole lot of just set data. This is what it is. We know the the biological makeup of a bass, how it acts, how it spawns, how it transitions around. But uh, there's very limited research on how a bass actually adapts to its water uh you know they can only you can kind of only go off of that bass and that body of water for for whatever that research being done and it's limited so bass are known to be able to adapt to adapt to to, to baits and you know, they do have some type of pea brain memory but somehow they just know how to adapt to it uh so yeah man i think it's a huge deal it lets you see fish that other people can't see. I mean, that that in itself is an advantage. Chris, have you got to see a live scope? Kayak community, are people running live units? I know I know, side scan's a big deal, but what about live units? I, I saw um, – oh, shoot, his name's slipping me right now, but uh, I do believe there was uh, someone that had recently installed one on their, on their kayak uh, that fishes the KBF trail. Um, and so, I mean, from a technology point, I mean, you know, this Shane, I mean, the kayakers nowadays, I mean, they're as advanced as the boaters are from a technology standpoint. I mean, they're running, uh, you know, a lot of expensive equipment on their boats to, 
to help them, um, you know, find the fish. And so, you know, I, I think obviously it's, it's, it's a game changer. It's, it's a big advantage. Um, you know, with that said, all the tournaments I fish, a lot of times the guys cashing the checks aren't the ones that's pulling up with the uh, best technology on the boat. So, but um, catch a fish is all about, you know, finding structure, uh, figuring out, you know, where they're holding up at and things like that. And so as the technology such as this gets better, I mean, it's only going to help. So if you, if you know how to use it and take advantage of it and, and use it to your benefit then well right i mean you're I almost you'd be game. crazy not to right i mean you you know it, it, if it's within somebody's means to be able to per and it's no small purchase you know the the basically the base model sliding into a, a garmin live view unit you're talking what uh 2200 bucks ish i think there was some deals floating around for a little less than that now uh if you just luck out on the on the unit but it's it's over 2000 bucks uh generally uh but a couple comments and, and you all guys you all uh kick it kick it around josh milam uh, if you don't know josh josh is an accomplished tournament angler local uh, river stick here, man. He spends a lot of time on the river here, uh, but he says a must have, but here is a key comment. Kenny day, Kenny Sutton, Ma one of one of, we're not going to call him the Sutton master. We, uh, we all know there's, there's some guys that know Sutton really well, but Kenny is definitely one of them. Kenny says, you got to know when to leave it alone too. Uh, I, I got to agree with that. You all too. I mean, you got to yeah, know yeah. when to leave it alone. Uh, Chase, you, I mean, you looking at it, you can stare at those those fish down there. You can watch your bait dropping down to them. Literally, we've all seen the videos. It is spot on what you see uh, once you get it get 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 one set up. And I, I personally don't know one. Uh, I want to make that real clear. I've been I've been lucky to fish with a couple people and get to see it in action. And they were even kind enough to say, "Hey, check it out in action. This is what's up." But you got to know when to leave them alone, Chase. Yeah, I mean, I see way too many people, and I'm guilty of it too. That just that all they want to do is sit there and watch it. After you get it and you catch a couple on it, and you you know you kind of start getting the feel for how to catch some on it, I think you can get caught up pretty easy. Uh, you know, just watching the thing all day. And I, like I said, I'm guilty of it. I've done it, but I think the more I use it, the more I I feel like it's a tool. So the more I you know I just kind of leave it alone. Heck, I've even had to turn it off and be like, okay, that's that's enough of that. Yeah, I man. Get super sad. We 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 sat up. Uh, I'm trying to think. Uh, maybe a tournament, or maybe it was pre-fishing. I can't really remember. But uh, man, me and a buddy sat on. We could see them. I mean, you could see them plain as day. There's fish everywhere. Uh, now, skilled enough to say, okay, that was uh red eye rock bass especially at summersville i mean you see a lot of fish sw swimming around there's a lot of perch in that lake too of course we know walleye gar everything else but uh uh let's see yeah i took it actually the first time i used it and i'll i'll just tell you how how i why i got so hooked yeah, so man. the first time i used it i went to i went to lake cherokee and uh we were out there and we're, we're on top of this on top of the shoal and we're we're just kind of messing around i'm trying to see if i can see any with it well, I mean, no kidding, like 10 minutes into the 10 minutes into using it, I see a school of like three or four. They just look like blo they're just blobs. They come swimming by and I'm like, I, th I throw my little cricket out there and it, it hits it. No sooner hits the bottom. I watch it eat it. And I was like, no way. I caught like three pounder. It was awesome. It was insane. Well, I mean, and that's the thing in your hook. There, there's a ton, oh, of, yeah. comments, ton it's, of comments. Ton of comments. Right off the bat. Ton of comments coming in. Uh, guys saying that, hey, Tony Brown, I think, uh, commented. Uh, yeah, Tony Brown right here. Uh, actually, Bass Festival winner. What's up, Tony? Thanks for tuning in, buddy. Uh, Bass Festival winner. They've been fishing a long time. Tony, though, comment up, man, if you're still on here. Let everybody know how long you've been fishing that thing. Finally won one there last year. We're pumped up for you, man. Uh, I know I wanted to get you all on a show. We never really got around to it, but we'll uh, – we might be able to catch up with that, but live scope, it's insane, man. We're, we're seeing that. That is definitely game changer gets thrown around a lot. Chris, I commented on your post earlier about an inflatable kayak. We, we will definitely get, get that as a topic to cover one day because that is an, an insanity with what most people think about, but we won't go there. That's, that's, that's hey, way too hey, much. Uh, yeah. Hey, 
Shane, uh, I know uh, my buddy Robert Robert Weicker. He's uh, I think played around with some of that maybe Garmin stuff on his yappy kayak before, and uh, and I know he's getting ready to head to Florida tomorrow. I think for a big tournament down there, a kayak tournament. And, but uh, the technology that's coming out for them kayaks, what they're doing with them is amazing. So yeah, man, uh, it's crazy. You know, you, uh, back in the day, you grab a used bass striker with an old Garmin unit or something on it, fifty five, sixty five hundred bucks. Go hit the water and roll. Now you're picking up a two thousand dollar kayak, fifteen hundred dollar kayak. Of course, they range all the way up to. In Chris, what's that new uh, all carbon fiber apex? Isn't it like ten grand or something? Ten G's. Ten G's for a kayak. Uh, I don't know. That that's a whole. Different, but it just shows you how, how far that industry has come. It's 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 insane. All right, twenty twenty one. We don't want to drag too much out. There's there's a ton of comments coming in. Uh, I do want uh, Tony. I have to get with you, man, about uh, about that 360. I've watched a lot of videos. Hummingbird 360 it kind of gives you that 360 view of what your side view would show you, but it's constantly updating. So if you're really good with the 2D type sonar or a side scan type sonar, it's super highly detailed. Uh, I, I I want some info on that. I definitely want to want to want to dive into that because I think there is a, a huge time and place for certain bodies of water with that. But 2021, and if you are just first now joining us, let me remind you, I am Shane Rains, Doc Talk West Virginia, everything bass fishing, right there, bottom. Let's see, bottom, bottom left, right here, right here, over here. Hit that share button, share this video. I uh, want everybody to be able to meet the guys we got coming on. Uh, we're all friends. We're all fishermen. We're all anglers. We all are just like all of you, and, and we love covering bass fishing. Uh, but there's Chase Sansom, Brad Lee West, Brad West, and Chris Schaefer. 2021, Chase, start with you, man. What are you most excited for, dude? What's going on for 2021 for you, uh, your first tournament of the year? What's up? Uh, I'm actually headed to Norman the first week of uh, March, so I'm looking forward to that. Gonna go down there and catch a couple spotted dogs. Uh, hopefully, hopefully, I get to catch a couple on the old jerk bait, but we'll see how that goes. Yeah, dude. Uh, jerk bait fishing. I mean, obviously, that is a spotted dog lake for the most part. Uh, and that's a that's a. If you haven't got to read up on Lake Norman, by the way, do do a little research. There's a big study going on with the Alabama bass that is kind of. You know, it's just a different strain of bass that is kind of kind of taking hold there, and they're seeing their largemouth numbers decline due to that. Uh, spot spotted bass everywhere there, but uh, and, and but read up on that. Check that out. We can always cover that in in another day, another episode. But that is very interesting how they've seen some some fish size and population decline due due to uh, I think it's uh, yeah Alabama bass. Uh, so anyway, and I think that's a cross between spot and a large mouth or something along that line uh and i'm sure somebody will hop on here and probably probably correct me pretty quick for that uh but brad what are you excited about dude uh we got chase you know he's he's done down on the college ranks uh yeah. chase did you say you're going to fish any bfls this year no bfls i'm gonna i'm gonna do the uh the pro am instead this year so after nice. after the one in March, uh, I guess I got a, maybe about a month off, and then we head to Sutton. So nice. Nice. I'll yeah, probably yeah. I'll probably stick around Sutton a little bit that the end of March and uh, see what I can find. Yeah, I figured you probably uh, uh, I would stick to those winter patterns that <laughs> you were talking about. I would say there would be a lot of folks to uh, comment about the same. But uh, Brad, Ohio River, what's going on? We all know the two biggest tournaments of the year are out there every year. One of the longest standing. Uh, single standing tournaments with the Bass Fest, West Virginia Bass Fest. Big money paid out every year. What's up, dude? Right. Ohio River. Right. No, you, uh, you're exactly right. You got the Bass Festival is the longest uh, um, tournament there going there. I think it'll be uh, 15000 again this year, I think. Um, and, of course, you got the Fall uh, High River Challenge. I think the last couple of years has been another fifteen grand tournament on the High River here. And... You got a couple really good trails, the, the High River Buddy Trail um, um, that they put on. Great following on that one. Uh, a little, little uh, cheaper on entry. Uh, 
uh, and everything based on how many boats and payouts. And now you got this High River uh, Challenge Tour, I think it is, is called or something. They got a tour where a little more money on the entry, but a lot better payout on on first place. And uh, and then of course you got a lot of really good just regular open tournaments by some clubs. You know, the club I'm in, Hocking River, is usually one of the first one one of the opens on uh, the river up here in April. And then you got the big tournaments, a lot of fun. The, the Belprey Homecoming, it's a $60 entry, but they average about 90 boats up there to 100 boats for that tournament. So, yeah, man, uh, a lot going on in the High River. Uh, and yeah. if you are local to that area, you know that's that's where the tournament, uh, the tournaments happen. There's not a whole lot of options when you get up on the High River. Uh, highly encourage a lot of those guys come down check out our lakes and and man we want to come up and check out uh i'm from the charleston area not too far from the higher ohio river uh usually Definitely. donate donate a lot of money up there brad to other people but uh <laughs> it's still have a lot of fun well, <laughs> right right and you know I, i've kicked around i did the uh what uh, was it two years ago when the pro-am did it the first year they had of the trail of dreams and which was a lot of fun uh shane you fished it as well and uh um, I, I don't know if it's filled up yet or not, but if it ain't, I'm, I'm still kicking around the idea of maybe trying to squeak in on it still, uh, just trying to figure out some dates and all that for me for the rest of the year. Whoa, 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 whoa. I'm not, not trying to interrupt anybody, but this is info that I've heard floating around, but coming from Mr. Thompson himself. And, and, and if you're tuning in, Check this out. We're going to display it. John Thompson, Seven Rivers Marine, Ohio River Tour, Ohio River Challenge. They are looking at $25,000. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I see Chase over there. Then my brows raising, buddy. Uh, 25K, dude. We don't we don't get to see that. Uh, I, I know the audio's, audio's going crazy. I got a little excited. I got to, got to calm down a little bit. But uh, 25K to win, dude. Uh, that's How do you, you get this sucker? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so, Johnny. I, I don't even know the river, but I'll, I'll jump in. <laughs> well, Johnny, man, we, uh, we're we excited to get some more information on that. Uh, yep. Uh, it looks like uh, looks like there's still spots for the Pro-Am. Yeah, yeah. 20, 2021 is going to be insane. Chris, 2021 Kayak Trail. Uh, man, dude, give me the update. What the heck is going on? Uh, what, what, what are you most excited about? Well, I'll start off and say, I, I just want to start off by applauding the West Virginia, uh, kayak trails, um, in the off season based off the information we're seeing on Facebook. Uh, it seems like they all came together and coordinated, uh, their schedules so that, I mean, essentially if, if you're a competitive kayak angler, you can literally fish every weekend in West Virginia on the local trails if you, if you want to and you're able to. So, I, I mean, I think that's awesome. Uh, really happy to see that. Um, and uh, I think it's going to create a, a lot of opportunities, not, not only this year, but in the future uh, by, by seeing that. Um, personally, I'm going to stick to some, some of the local tournaments. There's a lot of really good tournaments around here this year. Um, but I'm also going to branch out uh out of my comfort zone a little bit this year and uh participate in a new league called the kayak fishing league um and that's essentially a um an nfl style uh tournament kayak tournament league where they have um uh represent states so you have a team of six anglers that represent and the states play each other you get three home games and three away games and so uh, I'm gonna try that this year. I thought it sounded cool, something new, and uh, so that's that's my plan. And then I'll obviously probably definitely try to fit in the the Hobie uh, BOS Susquehanna River event. Uh, looking forward to that again. Um, but um, I'd say that's probably what I'll get fit in 2021. Yeah, dude, it's hard to find, it's it's so hard to schedule life, work, uh, relaxation time try to sneak out of town for a big tournament, especially the Susquehanna, which shame on me for her, for never been able to get up there yet. You and I've talked about it. Uh, insane fishery. That's a, 
that's an insane amount of information to cover tonight. We could we could talk all about the Susquehanna River. If you've been there, let us know. Uh, insane, insane. Um, so very, very excited. Twenty twenty one. I know we each have kind of our own little uh, little deal going on this year. Uh, I'm going to be covering some of the uh, Trail of Dreams tournaments. You've heard, you've seen that announcement. Lyle was on there a couple lives ago. Going to be covering uh, the Pro Ams. Really, uh, you've heard me talk about it. Uh, you know, we need to be able to recognize our local anglers. We have some phenomenal anglers uh, that do big things, and, and when we'll get to all those. I could sit here and, and list name after name, but. It's time we have an avenue to recognize our anglers, recognize our youth, for, uh, try, try to maybe, hopefully, provide some opportunities for people to capitalize on as anglers, as fellow anglers that, that we like to compete against, but we're all friends too. Uh, we got something special here in our state, even though we're up against a lot of things. So it's, it's an exciting 2021. We all got our own agendas. We're going to try to cover a little bit of everything uh, right here. So I know you all are excited about it. Uh, just just as excited uh, as I am. So, yeehaw, right? Heck yeah, man. <laughs> yeah. Well, let me – before we get going too much further, uh, we were talking about schedules, Chris. Uh, you were mentioning the uh, national kayak trails, those bigger tournaments, the regional events, the national events, Hobie. KBF, BASS, Bass, of course, last year was their inaugural year for the Bass Nation Kayak Series. One of our own anglers, uh, Mark Edwards, goes down there and practically almost wins the daggone thing. Uh, and he's a f phenomenal stick anyway. So we have a lot of, lot of different options. If you want a copy of the schedule, I know the uh, West Virginia DNR has not updated their tournament listings on the website yet. But if you want, uh, and there's one tournament trail that I will update, and that is Fishers of Men. I'll get with Dustin and uh, update this on this calendar. But if you want a copy of that calendar, reach out to me personally. It might take me just a little bit to get you that, but I have updated all the Trail of Dreams, Bass Nation of West Virginia, uh, West Virginia Bass Federation, Marshall, Ohio River Buddy Trail, Ohio River Tour, and all the big championships that goes along with it, including all the three main kayak tournament trails. I've got that overlaid with the National Kayak Tournament Trail also. So if you want those to be able to compare to your existing schedule, let me know. If you've got a Samsung or an Android, this will be able to download and save actually directly to your calendar. So we're trying to make that a little bit easier for you. One-stop shop. I've already got it done for you. Reach out to me. Let me know. Try not to – I mean, you can comment on this uh, stream, but it might be, take me a little bit while uh, – little while to get back to that so shoot shoot us a private private message here on the page uh but guys what do you think man 2021 just around the corner i can't even explain how pumped up i know i am uh the folks at home everybody's saying how how pumped up they are for 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 this upcoming year it just can't get here soon enough this 25 degree weather has, has got to give at some point <laughs> yeah I've, I've had about yeah. all i can take man I'm uh I'm ready to go crack some. That's for sure. Yeah, man, yeah. for sure. Thank you. Let's get it going. Yeah, for sure. And this is what this episode was all about. Uh, these these four guys right here. Uh, you see them. I'm your host Shane Rains. Uh, but uh, no less, no greater than anybody else. Chase Sansom, right here. Brad West, and of course Chris Schaefer. Uh, th this is your crew. If you got a question, want to hear about anything kayak, bass boat fishing, West Virginia fishing. Uh, conservation stuff, uh, reach out to me. Uh, if one of these guys can help out and you know them personally, reach out to them. I'm sure that they're going to be willing, but give them some time to get, get kind of acclimated to this. Uh, this is all new. This is live. Like I said, you don't get a chance to go back and, and do anything, but we're excited for it, guys. I know you are too. And, uh, man, I, I, we're going to have a good time. We're going to have a, as much fun as we can for as long as we can. When it's no fun, then we're going to we'll, – we'll, we'll all uh, – we'll quit that. But until then, we're going to have a good time doing it. Heck, Heck yeah. yeah. Pumped well, up, man. Yeah, yeah. Well, listen, uh, before we go, everybody stay tuned. Uh, let's see. Fishers of Men's got an update. Before we go, though, I do want to hit on one last thing. So, everybody, take uh, literally a one-minute break, two-minute break – 
Uh, give me just one second. We're going to everybody take a break. I'll be right back. We're going to update everybody on the Summersville Master Plan. Very important information. So this stream will continue. Everybody stay tuned. Take you a quick little break. We'll be right back. Gotcha. Normally that time of year, it's, it floods. Too, Hi, what's so. going on? We are back. I hope everybody enjoyed a quick little break. I know everybody was still uh, kind of talking there. Didn't give anybody a, <laughs> a heads up. Sorry about that. Uh, but we are back. We are back. We are back. We are back. Uh, but I think I still got someone muted. But Summersville Lake Master Plan. Want to take just a quick break. Sorry about that, everybody. Um, everybody can kind of chit chat. That's a good thing with the live. It gives an opportunity for the whole community to kind of just log on, be able to chit-chat amongst each other as well and kind of catch up. I know we don't get a chance to always, especially with COVID, man. Uh, it sucks. Uh, not to be able to show up at the ramp, be able to talk to your buddies, not be able to hang out at the weigh-in. Chase, I, I know you're filming. You saw it at the national level, regional level, state level, you name it, Brad, you as well. Uh, Chris, same deal, man. There's nothing better than showing up, being able to camp out with your with the entire group of people and be able to mingle around. So it's definitely, um, uh, we've tried to, uh, find a way to be able to still communicate and hang out with all of our, all of our fishing, fishing friends as well. But last topic, and we're going to go, we're already running almost an hour. And I always say it cannot go over an hour. I appreciate everybody stuck, stuck throughout. We're, we're trying to have a good time, keep it interesting before you know it, that hour will fly by, but Summersville Lake master plan. You have until February 16th, I believe. I was just right off the top of my head. I think it's the 13th or the 16th. I think the 16th. You have to have your comments submitted, emailed uh, in. I can. This is in, in a, uh, a post, let's see, a couple lives ago and another post. Go back uh, through a couple posts on Dog Talk, and we'll definitely make sure we share that again. you got to get your comments in. This is our only chance to be able to speak up and let them know how we feel. What are the changes that are potentially happening? There's a ton of good information in that master plan. F guys, if you haven't heard, Chase, I know we've talked to Chris, uh, very briefly filled you in, but part of the master plan is, or, or the master plan itself is to be able to create a plan for 20 years. I think this, this plan is set for uh, to go 20 years. So it gives them a 20-year plan to how to adapt and change and make changes and spend some money and a lot of money 
for improvement so everyone can be able to enjoy the lake more. Uh, obviously, a lot of studies go into that water quality, uh, runoff, vegetation, you name it. It's all in that master plan. Phenomenal. 93, 96 some pages worth. Read it. It is wonderful to learn the history about Summersville Lake and also vegetation. Uh, you name it. Everything is there. Everything is there. They, they give you the full water, water quality control. But big topic is losing access to Long Point Marina Ramp out by the marina. They're wanting the entire lease take over the entire lease from the entire ramp area all the way to the top of the hill, and they will maintain that. Currently, Summersville, uh, City of Summersville, operates and uh, maintains a sewage, a little wastewater plant down there, a small one, I believe, for the marina, They uh, and uh, several other locations. DNR actually collects the money. And user fees at that same ramp, the same ramp that federal dollars have built back whenever the, 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 the lake was first built, back in 1960 when everything first took off. So we're, they're wanting to take away our rights to that ramp, built with federal money, and keep everybody out unless you're a marina customer. I think a lot of people have, or have a problem with that. I think we're all willing to grow, but we have no backup. There are no winter access ramps, or once the lake gets lower later in the year when Battle Run is inoperable, the winter ramp isn't even able to use yet, and you can't park them at Sam Run. So that's some of the issues for that. $5 parking, or excuse me, $5 entrance area, entrance fee, or day use fee is actually what it's called, to get into Salmon Run, Battle Run, that's going to be shoved all, all the way out almost to the main road and, of course, uh, Long Point Marina area. So it's our time. we got to speak up. What do you all think? Uh, now that I kind of gave everybody an update, what is the, what's the deal, man? How do you feel about somebody <laughs> trying to take on uh, <laughs> a whole area that we practically we have paid for? Everyone that's used that in the last uh, 60 years has paid for the use of that ramp. I, well, I don't know, Shane. I just, <laughs> I just don't like losing any kind of access to a, a body of water that we, you know, have been able to use for, you know, a lot longer than I have been fishing. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah, and, and I th and I think that's where a lot of people, a lot of people fall on that issue. Is listen, if there was a grand, big old ramp at that area right there when you first turn into Battle Run. Uh, I think they actually call it the uh, spillway area or emergency spillway area. Uh, that's a huge lot right there that could be used. It's never been used. They're talking about temporarily planting wildflowers to beautify it until they decide what to do. They, listen, I don't want anybody to think I'm knocking the core for that plan. That is definitely would be a good plan for until you, to, till you figure it out. Uh, but Man, I'm not a, I don't think anybody's a fan of, of giving up something that we all, it's all of ours, all of us, not the marinas, and especially when somebody's going to make some money. And this is not a knock to them. They had a giant ramp facility that was usable all year, plenty of parking. We didn't need that. And they worked out some crazy deal and they could show it to where everybody was comfortable saying, hey, man, they're paying X amount of dollars. These amount of dollars are going to go to the lake to build that ramp, to improve this, to improve that. Maybe you could get some more people on board, uh, but Chris, what do you think about that? Kind of hearing hearing about it the first time, and that that is just a small piece, but that is a big piece of the master plan. Is uh, and, and, and and let me clarify, there are issues. The main issues of Summersville Lake that have been expressed, and I think we all feel it is overcrowding at ramps and access areas, parking uh, for day use uh, folks for tournament anglers. Granted, we're not allowed to fish there during the day from Memorial Day to Labor Day anyways, so that's a, somewhat of an invalid argument for some folks. Uh, but, man, what do you think? I mean, just kind of hearing about a little bit of that, what do you think? Well, um, not I don't have a lot spot. of experience with summers. <laughs> Can you hear me okay, Shane? Yeah, buddy. I want not to put you on the spot, though, but what you, what you – uh, 
Let me know what you think. No, uh, I think that uh, I definitely understand everyone's concerns that uh, we're seeing on social media and everyone's frustrations. Uh, but I think the path you're suggesting people follow as far as submitting their comments, I mean, that's the process. And if, if you're not comfortable with it, I think people really need to uh, make their voice be heard. And and it's one of those things where if you sit back and don't say anything, then it's hard to complain after things are in, in, um, approved of enforced. So um, I'd be curious. I, I was going to ask you while you were talking there about the comment deadline. Um, you know, I'm not very familiar with that process, but uh, when you send some, when you send a comment in, do you know if it's been addressed or is that documented somewhere? Do you have any idea what that looks like? Uh, you know, generally I can comment on for a commission meeting, DNR commission meeting. This is obviously separate than the core, but I do know there were four meetings that took place leading up to this new master plan. These started back in 2017. Yes, COVID happened in 2020. We know that. And I know things take a long time to go through all the different different uh, <laughs> steps they need to go through. I get that. But three meetings back in 2017. A lot of the data, even though there is a lot that, that is broken up and, and, and given through 2019, but a lot of these comments were for 2017, multiple years ago. This isn't even taken 2020 the impact from COVID and ever being everybody being stuck at home and, and, and flood in the lake, you know, Summersville usually sees about a million visitors annually a year, a million visitors. One of the hev heaviest uh, uh, used lakes for sure in the state. So that's one of the big reasons is, 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 is people want to use the lake. Uh, and us trying to figure out a way to share it with everybody and, and leaving us all the same amount of opportunity. Well, that makes sense. And, you know, we it's a little bit of a different subject, but everything's going on with the New River Gorge and, and yeah, all that. Yeah. Now, that personally, I mean, I, that will affect me more than the Summersville changes will. So, um, you know, I think it's all um, – it'll be interesting to see how it all plays out. Yeah, and 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 – I might have just got off a little bit, a little bit of uh, off topic there, but yeah, for sure. Uh, the the process is as, as simple as sending in the email. Uh, I'm sure that is logged and always put up for public review. Most everything is supposed to be. Uh, I will check on that, and I, I know the D, the DNR they'll post every single public comment part of their meeting minutes. Uh, or whatever they call it there for their commission meeting. I think it's like a, like a meeting minute. So all of that does get logged. So everybody can see that publicly. Uh, I but think that's just good to know. A, yeah, man. I mean, like you said, you, you, it makes you wonder. We all want to stand up. If, if uh, you look at the bear hunters a few years ago, when I first started Dog Talk, almost two years ago now, I went to the commission meeting, didn't really know what to expect, never been to one, always wanted to go, and 300 plus, 400, 500 Bear hunters show up uh, against guided bear hunting. Not my topic. I don't know anything about bear hunting. Never been. But uh, regardless, it just shows you. You show up in numbers. Everybody, uh, the, the public start comment. These are the folks that are directly, uh, and we have contact with, with all these folks. If you got a question for the DNR, reach out to them. They will answer it. If you got a question for the Army Corps, reach out to them. I had a half-hour conversation about all the Summersville stuff with the folks up there. Super, super awesome people. So get your comments in. If you want more information, look it up. Uh, I, and you can go back through the page and find all that for sure. Uh, uh, and Ken did comment, though, just for, so everyone knows. Uh, he would receive a response from the Army Corps of, United States Army Corps of Engineers in regard to his email email comment so that's good to know wonderful to know just just at least something saying verifying we got your comment we read it we hear you uh for sure well guys listen i don't want to keep everybody on any longer than we need to speak up it's our time to voice to be heard we're going to have a great time right here on Dalk talk, talk any last words chase chris brad give you a chance here like i said i'm glad to have y'all uh, we're all buddies anglers all sharing that same passion, but uh, last shot, man. Uh, little little last sign off for anybody out there. Chase, go ahead, brother. 
Yeah, man. I mean, I'm just pumped up. You gave me the, uh, the opportunity to come on, and hopefully we get to keep this going. I'm pretty excited about it. I'll get a little more used to it as we uh, as we go a little further. But, yeah, thanks for uh, having, having us on. Thanks for giving us the opportunity, and I uh, can't wait to see where this all goes. Yeah, man, I'm excited too. Well, man, stick around. Every, all y'all just stick around for a few minutes. We'll, we'll chit-chat here after we, we log off. But, uh, Brad, any last little second words other than, hey, man, we fought some audio today. We'll work through that. This is all uh, somewhat new. We're going to – equipment changes 24-7, but we got it working in time. So, what do you think, dude? Ready for 2021? No, I'm just excited, man, to get the year started and look forward to – working with Chris and Chase here, you know, you know, getting to know them and, uh, and always working with you, Shane and, and doc talk and, uh, and, uh, see where this thing goes. I think it's uh, it's going to be a lot of fun this year. Yeah, man. We're going to have a blast blast. Absolutely. Buddy, Mr. Ohio river. Hold on one second there, Chris, what's up, dude. I know you kind of, kind of ended with you with the Summersville stuff, but I know you're pumped up, man. I mean, you had, uh, pretty good long conversation we don't get to see each other that often until we kind of just randomly stumble across each other at a trail or something but man i know you're pumped up you cover uh and follow everything kayak fishing and bass fishing and national news and you name it man i'm glad to have you brother yeah man i'm i'm pumped we're getting ready to i mean next week um is the first major kayak fishing tournament of the season down in Kissimmee. uh so you know we're we're there now man it's you know, we've been kind of try- having to find things to talk about over the winter, but now we're, we're going to be having live things we can talk about every week, and I think it's going to make the show really interesting. Yeah, man, i got to definitely agree with that. I'm excited uh, <laughs> for sure, you know, uh, to, to be able to be able to kind of conversate with with buddies, other anglers in the industry that that like to fish, that are part of the community, uh, I, I think we're going to definitely build on something pretty fun, pretty special here. And, and like I told you all, all of you, uh, I, I'm really excited to have you all here, uh, definitely with me, with, with me, with me, and part of this journey, man. I think it'll be fun to be able to kind of ping off each other. Uh, and last time before we go, I am your host Shane Rains at Dog Talk a West for. Virginia, Chase Sansom, Mr. Marshall University, uh, a little bit of everything, our buddy Brad West on the Ohio River and everything up on that west uh, northwest area, uh, a little bit of everything, of course, Chris Schaefer. So, everybody, thanks for tuning in. Come back. I, I don't know what's going to go on for next week. Like I said, we, 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 a lot of this was been talked about. We kind of jumped right in. Fought through, uh, setting all this up last second, so we're pumped up to be here. But everybody, tune back in. Dog Talk West Virginia, like us on Facebook. Hit that bell icon on the YouTube channel so you can be notified when a new video drops. Uh, you can find all that and more, of course, uh, right there on the Facebook page of Dog Talk West Virginia. But until next time, thank you all for tuning in, and we will see you on the water. <laughs>